So I'm Jim Waldo. I'm a professor of the practice of computer science at Harvard University, and I'm also the university's chief technology officer. Uh, we're here today to talk about a paper that my colleagues and I produced called How to De-Identify Your Data. Uh, with me today are uh, Olivia Angiuli, the lead author of the article, and uh, Joe Blitzstein, a professor of the practice uh, in statistics at Harvard. The work that we did was around a set of data points that were gathered from the Harvard and MIT massive online open courses because of regulations like the Family Educational Rights to Privacy Act, uh, generally known as FERPA to share this data requires that we anonymize it in various ways. And so last year we produced a de-identified data set. After the set had been shared, uh, one of those people that we shared it with asked if we had run the same analysis on the de-identified data that we had run on the raw data set and if they were the same. And we found out that they were wildly different. I had already started working on some of this, and then at the beginning of the first semester of the school year, Olivia walked into my office. And so the previous summer, I was a summer intern at Google, and one of my projects was to model a certain relationship between user behavior and um, Google's advertising. But since I was an intern, I didn't have full access to the data, so I had to first write an anonymization script that aggregated the data to a, a level that was higher than a user so that I couldn't get any information about any specific user's search behavior. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, that changed the data so much that the coefficients of the model were actually completely opposite from what they should have been. So it took uh, me and some other engineers um, about a week to figure out what the actual cause was. But then we, when we figured out that the aggregation was um, skewing the data so much, it became a really interesting question in itself. Um, how can we protect privacy or aggregate data so that um, we can still create accurate models while protecting the privacy of the users whose data we're using? Mm -hmm. um, Joe, what, what, what is the sort of statistical background that uh, would cause somebody to be interested in this? So we're in this big data era where we have access to a lot of uh, really exciting data sets that we never had available before, but with that increases the challenges in terms of thinking about data quality and biases in the data. Sometimes pe people forget that just because you have a massive amount of data doesn't mean you have a massive amount of information, and there could be all kinds of selection biases or distortions going on. At the same time, there's an increased recognition of the importance of being able to replicate people's results and that, that the, these data sets are incredibly valuable for many different types of analyses as well as checking other people's analyses. So we want to have this kind of openness, but it's almost a completely unknown question what, what effect those have in terms of the statistical properties of, of different estimates that you could come up with. Certainly within the privacy community, most people had just assumed that if you de-identify a data set, it wasn't going to change it that much. So it was really surprising to me when we did the first de-identification of the educational data that it changed as much as it did. It was uh, one of these WTF moments in science that, that get really exciting. And then when Olivia walked into my office uh, after talking to you, and I guess from what she tells me, you said, well, you've got to go talk to Waldo about this. Uh, to find that there was another data set where this happened. It's, it's like, all right, so it's not just the kind of data that we had. So at that point, we started up the research that, uh, that, that led us to this paper.